This evening, first, President Ali's warning shot. Contractors and officials delaying national projects could face termination, fines, and blacklisting as the government cracks down on stone development. Plus, heartbreaking tragedy. A mother and her four children have perished in a fire that consumed their home in Berbice. Details on the community's reaction and the investigation into the cause. Also, fire devastates New Amsterdam. The iconic Bob and Sons supermarket has been lost in a massive blaze, impacting several businesses and leaving the town in shock. And a controversial move in Georgetown. Mayor Alfred Mentor's decision to grant a 25% tax waiver to One Communications, formerly known as GTT, faces backlash from the local government minister, who calls the act alarming and unlawful. Finally, Haiti has sworn in a new prime minister, hours after gunfire targeted an incoming flight from the U.S. These and other stories coming up on Headline News Update. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for November 12, 2024. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, during an early morning meeting at State House today, Tuesday, November 12th, President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali issued stern warnings to contractors and government officials over project delays affecting national development. Contractors with projects exceeding the year-end deadline or are being delayed by more than four months without valid justification will face termination, blacklisting, and liquidated damages. Because all of the projects here that are listed that are not completed before the end of the year will be terminated. All the projects that were supposed to be completed by the end of this year, and by the end of this year they're not completed or they're more than four months in excess, once there is no justifiable extension, they'll be terminated. The president emphasized the severe impact of project delays on the nation's development and citizens' quality of life. The meeting, attended by ministers, permanent secretaries, engineers, and technical staff, saw the president addressing delays caused by both contractors and government inefficiencies. So imagine the president is calling a meeting in national interest to deal with all of these contractors who have delays. And nobody will sit with the staff to check on this. He criticized the breakdown in communication and persistent bureaucracy that hindered project execution. Armed with reports from ministries and his independent team, President Ali confronted attendees with evidence of delays and inefficiencies. From this very meeting, the approach of some of the contractors and engineers, tell me that the right balance of energy is not existing for an effective project management environment. If you don't have the right structure, organization, the right attitude, you're starting negatively. The president emphasized the importance of accountability, timeliness, and proper management in national projects. You have to lead. I'm not saying don't enjoy your life. Enjoy your life to the maximum. But work hard so you can enjoy it to the maximum. Lead your workers and your team and your company by example. President Ali reiterated the government's commitment to ensuring timely and effective project delivery. In other news, a tragic fire in Berbice killed a mother and her four children, leaving the community devastated as investigations continue. More from Malcolm Carter. In a devastating incident early Tuesday morning, a fire of unknown origin claimed the lives of a 34-year-old mother, Hemwati Singh, and her four children at their home in No. 64 Village, Quarantine Barbice. The victims, aged between 2 and 14 years, were trapped in the flames and could not escape. The family's two-story wooden house, owned by Rohan Ramjatan, a 36-year-old cattle farmer, was destroyed in the blaze. A nearby unoccupied house was also damaged. At the time of the fire, Ramjatan was in police custody for a cattle rustling investigation. 
The family's 17-year-old son, Kevin Ramjitan, managed to escape unharmed. According to his account, he was asleep on the veranda when he was awakened by flames from the lower flat where his father's car was parked. Despite attempts to alert his mother and siblings, the intense fire forced them upstairs, where they became trapped. Residents reported recent issues with the local power lines catching fire, raising questions about the possible electrical cause. Kevin fled to his grandmother's home to seek help, but by the time emergency responders arrived, the house was fully engulfed in flames. Firefighters recovered five charred bodies from the debris, which were transported to the Skeldon Public Hospital mortuary for post-mortem examination. The tragedy has left the community reeling as police continued their investigation into the deadly fire. The surviving 17-year-old and the father remain under police scrutiny. Reporting for Headline News Update, Malcolm Carter. Thanks, Malcolm. A massive fire destroyed a supermarket in New Amsterdam, damaging a hotel, and impacted a nearby commercial bank. Here again is Malcolm Carter. A massive fire broke out on Monday evening in New Amsterdam, devastating the iconic Bob and Son supermarket. The fire ignited around 7.15 p.m. and quickly spread, partially engulfing the nearby Penguin International Hotel and scorching the exterior of the Scotia Bank. Firefighters across the region responded urgently, working tirelessly to control the flames and minimize further destruction. The loss of Bob and Son supermarket is challenging for the community as the store had been a staple for generations. Known for its extensive selection of products and deep community ties, the supermarket was a trusted source of groceries and essentials, making the damage both a business and personal loss for many residents. The Penguin International Hotel, a popular destination for locals and visitors, also sustained significant fire damage, compounding the impact on New Amsterdam's central area. The cause of the fire is still unknown, However, authorities are still investigating the cause of the blaze. The incident marks a significant loss for New Amsterdam, affecting local businesses and the community. Reporting for Headline News Update, Malcolm Cardo. Thanks, Malcolm. Sikarong will return, severe penalties for encouraging suicide, new law stipulates, and Georgetown City Council grants 25% waiver on GTT's outside rates. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoo's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinveld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Good, good girl, forget things. Good man! Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for doing surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hello, my fellow TikToker followers. He <laughs> is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all of these will be using peppies, black pepper, casserole, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose, 
season. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppers, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document planting flour. And then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in high. We serve with peppers, barbecue sauce. Ready to go to the supermarket and she pop up by enough, enough things. She feels she alone can cook. But she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226 GCOM is currently conducting a national registration exercise. Who can register? Anyone who will be 14 years or older by December 31, 2024, and is a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization, or is a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more. It is the civic duty and legal responsibility of all persons who meet the eligibility requirements to apply for registration. By doing so, you will be ensuring that you are issued a national identification card and be included in the official lists of electors for future elections, providing you meet all eligibility criteria. This registration exercise will end on November 29, 2024. For further information, contact the GCOM on 2250-2779 or visit the website www.gcom.org.gy. Welcome back. Vendors along Dennis Street, Sapphire, Greater Georgetown will soon benefit from an organized market setting as the government works to improve vending conditions. On Monday, Minister of Public Works, Diodat Indar, and Minister of Public Affairs, Kwame McCoy, met with the vendors to discuss the development plan. The proposed market aims to improve vending conditions and create a structured, accessible space for vendors and customers. Minister Indar explained that the consultation marked the first step in ensuring vendors are informed about the project. The government plans to survey the vendors, assess their stall sizes, and identify their needs to cater effectively to everyone. Minister McCoy emphasized that the new shopping area will transform business operations in Sapphire and nearby communities, ensuring vendors can support their families while serving their neighborhoods. The first preference for stalls will go to current vendors, but additional spaces may be available for other interested residents. Foundation work has already begun at the site. At the intersection of Dennis Street and Beefield Sapphire, designs and stall sizes are still under review. Moving on, the Georgetown Mayor City Council has approved a controversial 25% waiver on outstanding rates owed by the former Guyana Telephone and Telegraph Company, now One Communications. Local Government Minister Sonia Parag has condemned Georgetown Mayor Alfred Mentor's decision to grant the waiver. In a statement, she deemed the move alarming and unlawful, citing Section 253 of the Municipal and Direct Council Act, which limits such discounts to 10%. Minister Parag criticized the council for disregarding legal obligations and mismanaging finances while frequently requesting government bailouts. She highlighted that the waived revenue could have addressed critical services like garbage collection and market management, where the council needs to improve consistently. This waiver, the minister argued, fits a troubling pattern of financial mismanagement and political favoritism, referencing a controversial waiver granted to political parties in August. The minister has pledged to closely monitor the situation and ensure municipal actions prioritize the interests of Georgetown residents over political agendas. Minister Parag called for an urgent review of the waiver to ensure legal compliance and fiscal responsibility. On a different note, on the Ghana Suicide Prevention Act, individuals who encourage or assist another person in committing suicide face serious legal consequences, including fines up to $2 million and up to 10 years in prison. 
This was disclosed by Dr. Timothy Morgan, Director of the Mental Health Unit at the Georgetown Public Hospital during a workshop on mental health and suicide reporting held on Saturday. The workshop aimed to provide media personnel with the knowledge and tools for responsible reporting on suicide-related matters. The law specifies severe penalties for anyone encouraging suicide, including through social media, where individuals may be influenced by harmful comments such as, quote, go kill yourself. Dr. Morgan stressed the media's critical role in suicide prevention and urged reporters to avoid sensationalizing suicides to ensure ethical coverage that does not normalize or encourage such act. Additionally, it is an offense to report a suicide or attempted suicide before receiving approval from a coroner with penalties of up to $100,000 in fines and three months in prison. The law aims to protect vulnerable individuals and prevent the perpetuation of harmful behaviors while supporting efforts to reduce suicide rates in Guyana. Don't go away after the break. Kenyan herders use carbon trading for income and soil restoration. An airline suspended flights to Haiti after a plane was hit by gunfire. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, yeah. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those soldiers. I was dancing on a fall and fractured my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoo's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Riverton and Camp Street, Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all of these will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document platinum flour, and then this butter, we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket, and she proper buy up nothing of things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies <laughs> has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Curry smiles make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services. 316 Mill Street, Georgetown. Telephone 226-1082. The Guyana Elections Commission GCOM is currently conducting a national registration exercise. Who can register? Anyone who will be 14 years or older by December 31, 2024 and is a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization or is a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more. Types of Transactions Anyone eligible for registration is required to visit the registration office responsible for his or her area of residence to apply for registration. Persons who are already registered could apply for a name change if they have changed their names since they were last registered. Apply for corrections if there is incorrect information on their national ID cards. Persons who are desirous of conducting any of the above transactions must provide the relevant supporting documents. 
Persons who are already registered could request that their photographs be retaken if the quality of the photographs on their ID cards is unacceptable. Collect their new ID cards if they have not done so as yet. This registration exercise will end on November 29, 2024. For further information, please contact GCOM on the following hotline numbers 225 226-6557, or visit the GCOM website at www.gcom.org.gy. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Good evening, I'm Malcolm Carter and welcome to tonight's regional and international news. Several airlines, including Spirit, American Airlines and JetBlue, have suspended flights to Haiti after gunfire struck a Spirit Airlines plane approaching Port-au-Prince. The flight en route from Fort Lauderdale was diverted to San Diego in the Dominican Republic, where it landed safely, though a flight attendant sustained minor injuries. This incident marks the second gunfire attack on a plane near the Haitian capital in recent weeks highlighting the nation's worsening security crisis. Staying with current events, Haiti has sworn in a new prime minister hours after a flight from the United States was hit by gunfire as it made its final approach to the capital Port-au-Prince. Al Jazeera's Theresa Bo reports. A political and security crisis has spiraled out of control in Haiti since the killing of President Jovenel Moïse four years ago. There's no elected government or parliament in the country. Gangs continue to expand their hold of the capital, Port-au-Prince, and elsewhere, leaving death and destruction. Last April, a transitional presidential council was set up to lead Haiti towards elections. It appointed Gary Conil as interim prime minister. But on Monday, the same council fired him and installed Alix Didier Filemé, a businessman who promises to hold elections as soon as possible. We will work towards social cohesion, a necessary condition for the restoration of the state and the holding of inclusive, transparent and democratic elections. Only this will grant the state legitimate and constitutional authority. But on the streets of the capital, gangs seem to be the only authority, fighting the police and Kenyan forces sent in by the United Nations to help restore security. The United Nations mission is underfunded and outgunned. The UN says it's concerned. The Secretary General appeals to all member states to sustain and increase their security support for Haiti, including through multinational security support mission, ensuring that it receives the financial support it needs to successfully implement its mandate and expand, expand deployment and operations. On Monday, the gangs came close to the airport in Port-au-Prince. A Spirit Airlines plane from the U.S. was riddled with bullets while midair. The flight had to be diverted to the Dominican Republic. Gangs say they expect to be part of the negotiations to pacify the country. Neither the old PM and the new one. They don't do anything for Haiti. They're in power, but nobody voted for them. If they want to change Haiti, they will sit down with us to negotiate. But for now, it seems unlikely. Constant battles have displaced hundreds of thousands of people, and almost 4,000 people have been killed this year. A crisis that for now, has no end in sight. Teresa Wo, Al Jazeera. Internationally in Zhuhai, China, a 62-year-old man drove a SUV into a crowd at Zhuhai Sports Center, killing at least 35 people and injuring 43 more. The driver, surnamed Fan, was arrested while attempting to flee and is now in a coma from self-inflicting wounds. Authorities suspect Fan's actions were motivated by frustration over a property settlement from his recent divorce. Many victims were elderly or young, with witnesses describing chaotic scenes as a car plowed across all sections of the running track. President Xi Jinping called for a thorough investigation, and the central government dispatched a team to manage the incident's response. Finally, herders in Kenya are adopting to harsher droughts by setting aside 4.6 million acres for soil restoration through rotational grazing and carbon trading. Al Jazeera's Catherine Soy reports. Dam Lelesara has seen his share of climate disasters. He says droughts have become more devastating and he's lost many cattle. 
as his part of the world gets drier and hotter. He's a member of a community that set aside 4.6 million acres of land to restore the soil, while also making money from carbon trading. It helps us coordinate and manage our grazing areas. We are also able to take our children to school. I'm not sure how the project gets money from abroad. The managers of this project claim it's increasing stores of carbon by managing the grazing patterns of herds of livestock. Companies like Netflix, British Airways and Meta have put money here through carbon trading. Most of the animals come to controlled areas like this. The herders know each other. They take records of those who have come from outside. They say this has helped deal with conflict over water and grass. The Northern Rangelands Trust, or NRT, runs the program and is projected to remove 50 million tons of carbon from the environment that will be traded for cash over 30 years. That's worth about $300 million, but the concept has been questioned by some conservation bodies. They say NRT has failed to properly account for how much carbon is being removed from the atmosphere. What we are trying to do in the uh, northern Kenya rangeland carbon soil is ensuring that communities are not overgrazing and ensuring that they are following their rotational plan grazing management so that at any single season or particular time, huge chunk of the vegetation or the grasses are going through the regeneration process. We talk about sustainability. But many uh, critics around the world say carbon trading and, uh, is doing little to slow climate change. People are basically paying to, to, paying to destroy our environment. Yeah. So a factory that's polluting the air in Europe, they pay a broker in Kenya so that they can continue polluting in Europe. If we are concerned about the environment, that money should be used to put proper emission filters, whatever um, air filters, and reduce the actual pollution at source. These herders are some of the most marginalized people in Kenya. They say they don't understand the politics around carbon trading. They just want a better life for their families. Catherine Soy, Al Jazeera, Samburu County, Northern Kenya. Thanks, Malcolm. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3D weather forecast. And that's FTV2 headline news for this Tuesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.